the National Quiz Choice Online News. I'm Robin Steinberg, and today we have uh, Mr. Ray Poller uh, with me here at the British Club. And we're going to celebrate the Best of British uh, 2015 with this wonderful football player, formerly from Arsenal, and he's going to tell us more about it. Um, Mr. Ray Poller, tell us, what does it take to be a great footballer? Um, a lot of dedication, um, a lot of practice, um, and a little bit of luck sometimes. Uh, not always, uh, you know, right place at the right time, playing very well at the right time uh, when there's a few injuries in the team. And uh, I was a young lad, 17 years old. Uh, I've got my opportunity to go with the Arsenal first team. Um, joined every minute of it, made my debut as an 18 year old. Uh, and after that, it's about you know trying to develop into a good player. But it's it's a lot of hard work. I know people see the glitz of it when you're playing games, and but during the week it's it's tough sometimes, and uh, you have to really work hard and um, try and improve your own game to to, to be to, to try and stay at the top if you can. Which, lucky enough, I, I stayed at the top for for many years. Now, some of the footballers uh, who aspire to be in your position. Uh, they have this question that is, you know, uh, Mr. Pollard, uh, what does it take to learn defence? You know, why do you choose to be a midfielder? I think I, I was always a midfielder as a kid. I mean, you, you start at a very young age. I, I was playing in, in teams at eight years old, nine years old. Um, I signed for Arsenal sort of probably about 11 or 12 years old. Um, and then you have to have a position. Um, midfield was always a very energetic position. Uh, you had to box to box and you had to learn tackle, you had to score goals and you also had to uh, defend well at times. So I like that position. So that's why I picked that uh, to try and do well in a midfield area. Uh, but there's also good defenders and great strikers and good wingers. And a team needs everybody, not just a midfielder, not just a defender. You need to have a mixture of good defensive play, a good midfielder, midfielders, and obviously a good striker and a good goalkeeper. So I decided to, to go with a midfield uh, because I was always very energetic and, and um, I could run around a lot and be involved in the game all the time because that's what midfielders, sometimes you have to go forward, you also have to defend. And I enjoyed doing both. And another question from the football fans, and that is, what is your secret uh, strategy on how you identify your enemy and able to identify your weakness? Well, you know exactly who you're playing against. Uh, as a Premier League player, um, you see lots of games. Now, when I'm not playing myself, I'll be watching whoever's playing, Manchester United, Liverpool, Aston Villa, whoever's playing in, in, in that weekend. And you know exactly who the players you're playing against. Uh, during a week before the game, you, you would um, work a little bit with team play and pattern play of how they play sometimes. Um, so, but as a pre Premier League footballer, I think you should know every single player you're playing against, and uh, certainly I did. I knew their strengths and I knew their weaknesses. So uh, I tried to exploit their their weaknesses, and I, I tried to do well when uh, you know if it was a good attacking player. I would make sure I defended well as well. So um, I think you just have to be professional about it and um, know, know everybody who you're playing against. Do you have any plans uh, to develop football here in the Southeast Asia or anywhere else in the world? Well, I, I do. I love coming this part of the world. Um, I've been here many times in Singapore, uh, other places as well, Indonesia, um, Kuala Lumpur in, in Malaysia. So this part of the world is, is growing, you know, football so huge here, especially the Premier League. Lots of followers of Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. Um, but, you know, the football is developing, it's getting much better. The youngsters are improving all the time with their clinics they have. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a, for me, you know, any, any trip to this part of the world, I'm, I'm always, uh, always going to come because it's, it's very enjoyable and the hospitality is excellent and uh, I really enjoy being here. Now, here at the British Club uh, Singapore, uh, members uh, who are footballers have a question for you, and that is, uh, why do you choose uh, to be in Arsenal, and why not Manchester? Well, it was, it was always as a kid, um, you know, you, you wait for your opportunity. My family were West Ham fans uh, as kids, uh, but I got my opportunity to train with Arsenal, massive club in London. Uh, and then you always dream one day you can put that Arsenal shirt on and then run out and play in front of the fans because that's the biggest thrill you'll ever get. You know, walking out that stadium, 40,000 people, 50,000 people, 
chanting your name is it's, it's such a great feeling and um, you know I always wanted to play for Arsenal uh, and then when I got into the team is how long can I stay at Arsenal because uh, that's the hard bit you know trying to maintain your levels main, try to keep your fitness going um, and, but lucky enough I, I was there a long time you know from 18 to 32 nearly um, so very very happy with playing in lots of big games um, huge uh, seasons when we won a double and unbeaten season, uh, so I've been very lucky. But I also played with some great players, so uh, that always helps as well to keep you uh, up there and, and, and enjoying your football. Another question from the members of the club uh, at the British uh, club, of course. Uh, one of them who's a football uh, member, yeah, and the, the question is, uh, Mr. Poller, uh, how do you contain uh, your uh, proper Proper uh, composure, especially when you pl when you played in a big game for the very first time in your life. Yeah, uh, good question. I mean, you're always very nervous when you're, especially when you're young. You know, getting into the team. I made my debut at Anfield, Liverpool, which was a fantastic stadium to, to make your debut. But yeah, I've, I've, the main the main thing for me is that you know exactly what your job is for the team. Um, you know exactly what you've worked with all week during training, and you have, just have to try and play well on the Saturday and. Uh, there was a few nerves, but sometimes that's good for you. But once you get on that pitch, you know exactly your job for the team, and you make sure you try and do it as best as best as, best as you can. Um, on occasions, you all have bad games, you all have poor games, but it's it's about maintaining that level um, uh, throughout the season. And the most consistent players are probably the best players to have in your team. And uh, lucky enough, I was pretty consistent, um, and I think the manager knew exactly what I could bring to the team. How did you overcome fear? I think you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe that you know you are a good player. Um, a lot of it's mental. Uh, you can say, um, and, and once you get out there, express yourself. You know, go out there and, and, and prove to people you are a very good player. And um, I always had a lot of belief that I was a good player. So I, I try to bring that onto the field. And uh, if you can do that, you know, you can be a very confident player. Then you, you've got a, a great chance of, of being successful. Another question uh, from the uh, football fans here in Singapore and even at the British Club Singapore as well. Uh, is there any possibility you will come back and give a clinic uh, on football strategies? Oh, I mean, I'm, I've never done my coaching badges, but there's lots of good coaches around. Um, I think for, for me, when I turn up at clinics, it's great that the kids know you've, you've been there and done it and played football at the highest level. Um, you can join in with them, you can show them a little few tips here and there. Uh, but the coaches uh, are, very, are very good. I've never done my coaching badges, but I know probably to see to see kids and, and, and try and explain to them what you have to try and do to maybe uh, get the chance to be a professional footballer. But um, yeah, I, I mean the kids are great to see that they they're out training, uh, improving, and it's all about practice. You know, if you practice more, then you're going to be a better player. And, and that's always I've always said that to kids. You know, when you get that spare bit of time in a day. You know, you've got to do your homework, you've got to do your schoolwork, but if you've got a little bit of spare time, you know, keep the ball up, juggle the ball and, and, and learn technical gifts as a footballer. And then that will help you as you get older and as you get into teams. Well, Mr. Ray Pollard, thank you for sharing your thoughts. But before we go, uh, what would be the three key uh, advice uh, for football fans out there aspiring to be, uh, perhaps, be the greatest football player ever? Well, it's tough to be the greatest football player ever, Messi and people like that, but always believe that you can do it. Um, dedicate yourself, it's a lot of dedication, and um, practice. You know, you have to work really hard every single day. I mean, you can't come into training and say, oh, well, I don't really fancy it today. You have to dedicate that you are going to try your best every single day to be a better player. And uh, if you can do that, you will definitely see the improvements as you, as you get older. Uh, especially for young children, because children always look at the, the big players, Rooney from Manchester United and Steven Gerrard when he was at Liverpool, and always want to be players like that. But they will tell you it's a lot of hard work along the way. And uh, that, if you can do that, then who knows? You've got to have ability as well before you start. Uh, but if you can do that, then you've got half a chance of being a, a very successful player. Oh, before we go, there's one uh, humorous uh, question, if you don't mind. Uh, one of the members asked, uh, what is the one diet that you avoid while uh, being a football player, um, one, there's uh, one particular diet that you avoid. Diet. Yes. Is there any any particular food that you that you avoid? Um, 
really. I mean, uh, I was pretty lucky that I didn't put too much weight on. I think during the, the pre-season time, when you have your time off, like now, you've always got to be careful what you eat. I mean, not too much, you know, not too much uh, uh, alcohol, not too much food, because you can put weight on very quickly, because your body's been used to working it off day in, day out, but now you're not doing anything. Um, so any, any fatty foods, really, I try and stay away from them, because I know I can easily put weight on, uh, but that's, that, that was a little part of pre-season. When you go back to tra the training, they, they get that, that weight down again. And uh, you've got to enjoy yourself, but you've got to be just a little bit careful, you know, them fatty foods and try and keep a, a, a good, healthy uh, diet. So plenty of fresh fish and things like that when you're, when you're on holiday if you can. Once again, uh, Mr. Ray, thank you for joining us here at the National Coast Troy.